Hello, this is Paul Harris for the Future of Mining. Environmental, social and governance issues are becoming more important for resource extraction, developing new technology that can improve the efficiency of mining and lower the environmental footprint often requires equipment providers and miners to work together. Today, I'm joined by Eric Wesman, Managing Director of Erie's Flotation and Gerald Arnett, Vice President at Capstone Mining to find out how they are working together to improve environmental stewardship and profitability at Capstone's Pinto Valley Mining Operation. Thanks morning, for the introduction, guys. Paul. Uh, Erie's Flotation is very sensitive to responsible resource extraction and our mission is to be a world leader in this area. So our whole business model is delivering flotation technology that has significant benefits in terms of reducing environmental footprint and intensity of water and energy while improving separation efficiency so that more metal can be produced from a smaller resource. And we do that by working closely with our customers to evaluate and demonstrate our new technology such as the hydrofloat for coarse particle flotation and the stack cell for reducing the energy and capital requirements for conventional mechanical flotation. There's a great need to improve the efficiency of mineral processing flow sheets. We know that there's a large amount of new metal, and I'm thinking here of silver, rare earths, and most of the base metals that are required to build out the backbone of the new electric economy, such as long distance transmission infrastructure, electric motors, batteries, turbines, photovoltaics. The, the demand for these metals will increase greatly because of the green economy. And the mining industry has to be serious about finding ways to extract these materials more responsibly and efficiently. Over the last decade, Erie's has worked closely with miners throughout the world to develop technology focused on resource extraction that is more efficient. And by that, we mean more metallurgically efficient with a smaller footprint, less material waste using less water and energy and produce, producing safer tailings. We've achieved this not by making incremental changes to existing processes and equipment, but by looking at radically different designs for the major unit operations that drive these extraction processes. Thank you, Eric. Um, I'd like to dig more into that. Um, what, what are some of the radically different designs and how are they improving, improving recovery, reducing water and energy usage? Thanks, Paul. Today, we're gonna to talk about the hydrofloat coarse particle flotation cell, how it works, and how it can be used to improve global metal recovery, reduce water and energy consumption, and improve the safety of tailing storage facilities. A number of major mining companies have taken the step to commercialize this technology. And I thought we'd bring in one of those companies, Capstone Mining, who is evaluating the hydrofloat and coarse particle flotation technology to achieve a step change in metal recovery at their Pinto Valley mine in Arizona. Thanks, Eric. Capstone Mining's Pinto Valley Mine is located in a prolific mining district east of Phoenix, Arizona that has seen mining for over 150 years. Our operation was built around 50 years ago and our strategy is to retrofit it with the latest technologies to improve operational, environmental and safety performance. The Aries Hydrofloat fits into this strategy perfectly as it is essentially a bolt-on at the end of our flotation process designed to recover copper that would have been lost to tailings. This is a key technology for Pinot Valley as we look to get new mill performance from an older mill setting. We expect this will give us the opportunity to achieve higher throughput via grinding, coarser, lower power costs and lower water consumption while achieving sustainable copper recovery never seen in this operation's history of over 90%. The Hydro float and coarse particle flotation came onto our radar when Pinot Valley's metallurgical superintendent, Amut Arol, discussed the possibility with Erie's flotation and arranged for some test work at their applications lab to evaluate the suitability of the hydro float technology for scavenging our plant tails. The hydro float is a novel flotation technology that allows the flotation process to be pushed beyond the particle size range of conventional flotation technology. The grind size at Pinot Valley is very coarse at a P80 of 300 microns. It turns out that about 80% of the copper and molybdenum that are lost to tailings are in the coarse size range, shown here in orange, which makes sense because we know that conventional flotation does not work well in this range. 
Lab work done at Aries showed that the hydrofloat could claw back a significant fraction of this in all size classes and reduce the amount of final tail in each size range, shown in blue. You can see that the hydrofloat gains are proportionally greater in size classes between 300 and 600 microns, where conventional flotation is, a very, is very inefficient. The overall impact of the hydrofloat is to recover about half of the current losses, as shown by the red bar here. In our case, the lab test work indicated an additional global recovery of 6%. The other important thing to consider is that the coarse ore that is recovered with the hydrofloat has very little incremental costs associated with it. In other words, all of the costs of blast, dig, haul, crush, and grind have already been invested in this material. And all that is required is regrinding and refloating or cleaning. Furthermore, the ability to recover coarse particles could allow for higher mill throughput while achieving high copper recovery. Other benefits could be lower grinding costs, lower water and energy consumption, and increased tailing stability via coarser tailings. This was repeated at the site with the hydroflow pilot plant. A representative sample from the tail was taken through an Aries cross flow and hydrofloat and the results achieved six to 8% increases in copper recoveries, exceeding the company's expectations for a 6% improvement in recoveries. As a result of this work, we are conducting a feasibility study to implement this technology. Well, thank you, Jared. I mean, a six to 8% increase in recovery, that sounds massive. Um, I imagine you're um, waiting with bated breath to get the results of the feasibility study. Um, so th these lab and pilot results show a major improvement beyond conventional flotation performance. How are the, the fundamentals of the hydrofloat different from conventional flotation cells, Eric? Thanks, Paul. We often get that question, and it's a good question because if the hydrofloat used the same principles as conventional flotation, we wouldn't expect a radical improvement when we just refloated them using the same technology. The vast majority of flotation operations use stirred tank flotation cells, and they've only been improved incrementally over the last hundred years or so to their present plateau in performance. As a reminder, a mechanical cell uses an, an impeller and the shaft work creates shear to make bubbles and keep the solid suspended. And that uses a lot of energy on the order of a kilowatt per cubic meter of tank size. And these tanks are very large, uh, upwards of 300 cubic meters. And there's many of these in the plant. By comparison, the hydrofloat, which you're showing now, does not use an impeller. It uses a liquid fluidized bed, which is much more efficient for particle contacting. And also there's less wasted energy that ends up causing the bubbles and particles to detach before they get to the overflow. Also from a contacting perspective, the hydrofloat uses counter current flow, which is more efficient and creates less short circuiting than a stir tank. And that's why you don't need to put hydrofloats in series as you do for conventional stir tank flotation cells. Finally, the low shear and the freeboard of the fluidized bed allow the hydrofloat to recover the product by elutriation without the need of a conventional froth layer. And that also improves the recovery of coarse product. All of these innovations combined allow the hydrofloat to recover much coarser ore. Okay, thank you, Eric. Has hydrofloat performance been benchmarked uh, against conventional flotation? Yeah, that's another great question, Paul. Um, the slide that you've got up now shows how the uh, copper flotation recovery by size for a particular ore. And you can see the blue circles, which represents conventional flotation, show how the recovery degrades based on size. And that's a universal relation. It, it's been known for many years. The red diamonds show how that relationship can be pushed out with the hydrofloat so that the same flotation performance can be achieved at approximately twice the particle size. This means less grinding and a significantly coarser tail while achieving the same recovery. Considering about 30% of all of the energy used in mining is for crushing and grinding, this can lead to a significant reduction in electrical energy requirements. Additional energy savings can also be realized by having a coarser tail because there's lower dewatering and pumping costs. Thanks, Eric. And uh, why would you use hydroflow in a plant? The application for hydroflow that's being developed at Pinto Valley is the tail scavenging application. This slide shows why this is so effective. 
This data shows metal contained in tails from two major copper porphyry producers, each greater than 100,000 ton per day operations. These histograms illustrate the serious shortcomings of conventional flotation. They're good at recovering the middling size particles, but fines and coarse are missed, and they typically account for 85% of all metal losses. Erie's flotation has the stack cell to improve the recovery of, fine, of the fine fraction, which we'll talk about in another video. But for now, we'll focus on the hydrofloat, which our experience indicates can capture at least 60% of coarse tails. This is the business case for the tail scavenging application. Waste recovery, in addition to coarsening the grind of the mill, which allows more tons to be processed. And that's been recently reported by Newcrest for their Cadia Valley hydrofloat application. The nice thing about tail scavenging, as Gerald just pointed out, is that it can be added on to any existing plant in the world. In fact, Anglo-American is, is adding it onto their greenfield Quebeco plant in Peru so, it'll, so that it will be ready at the startup. The next application for the hydrofloat, which we think will soon revolutionize the conventional concentrator flow sheet, is the coarse gang rejection CGR application, which is currently being studied by multiple mining and engineering companies. We can show the concept using this generic flow sheet. In this application, the hydrofloat is put inside the closed loop of the secondary mill and acts like an ore sorter. In the coarse gang rejection application, the mill output goes to a two-stage size classification system, shown here as cyclones, where the fine stream reports to conventional flotation, the coarse stream reports back to the mill circulating load, and the middling stream reports to the hydrofloat. This allows an increase in the grind size, reduction in power, and generation of a separate coarse and fine tail. We wanted to be able to give some quantitative benefits of the CGR circuit. So we did some test work and modeling with Floor on Capstone's Cozumel mine in Mexico. That study was published last year at the Conference of Metallurgists in Canada, and the results were very interesting. The power required to run the ball mill in this study could be reduced by an estimated 30 to 50%. Approximately 30% of the total mill feed could be pulled out of the grinding circuit as a coarse barren tail at a size of two to three times coarser than conventional tailings. So the hydrofloat acted like an ore sorter by removing 30% of the feed instead of over grinding it for downstream recovery through conventional flotation. Speaking of conventional flotation, the size of the conventional flotation circuit using this configuration could be reduced by about 40%. So this system has a lot of benefits from the perspective of energy and water consumption. Already, companies like Anglo-American are looking at opportunities that have been created by having two separate streams, by being able to co-deposit the coarse and fine tails in ways that could eliminate wet storage facilities. And this is extremely important in regions with scarce water supply like Chile, not to mention the risk factors associated with long-term storage of wet tails that have led to several major disasters over the last decade. We're very excited about the new opportunities created by the coarse gang rejection application. In fact, as we speak, we're commissioning a demonstration plant in this duty at a plant in South America. Thank you, Eric. Um, Jared, I mean, what does all this mean for, for Capstone? It sounds like it's a, a significant opportunity, the ability to reduce energy, reduce water usage, recover more copper. Um, it all sounds very good. Yeah, all, all this is very important to Capstone. As you know, we are investing a lot in new technology that can improve the economics and sustainability of mining. Another example is our early adoption of the jetty catalytic technology for leaching low-grade calcopyrite and the adoption of new predictive blast fragmentation technology that has significantly increased the amount of fines in our run of mine ore. We are using new technology to give us a competitive advantage, and it's amazing what an older operation can achieve. Excellent. Well, well, that's all we have time for today. And I'd like to thank Eric and Jera for joining us and sharing with us um, some of the benefits of, of miners and, and equipment providers working together uh, in ways that are generating new solutions that are going to benefit mining in general for, for many, many years to come. Um, please stay tuned for more from the Future of Mining interviews. <laughs>